Hi, I'm Alex Cole and welcome to another Sales Guy Unplugged. Today, we're going to talk about why and how salespeople get themselves stuck in one-sided relationships with prospects. What do I mean by one-sided? Well, let me ask you this question. How often has the following scenario taken place? You, as a salesperson, go out on a face-to-face -face meeting with a potential client. The end of the meeting sounds something like this, from the prospect's perspective. This looks great. I really think this could be beneficial, and I'm excited. I would like to have a couple days to think it over, though. What is the salesperson here? Great. This is beneficial. I'm excited. You run back to your office and tell your manager all about the meeting, the pain or problem they described, and how you convinced them you could fix that problem. But after the rose-colored glasses are removed, you reevaluate the meeting and you realize something. In your excitement of talking to an actual prospect, you forgot to ask about their budget, decision-making process, and implementation time. They know your prices and offerings and what you can do for them, yet you have practically nothing. So why does this happen? In short, because salespeople trust too much and fall in love too quickly. We have a theory that all prospects lie all the time. Now, that may sound a bit outlandish, but let me explain. To start, when we say all prospects lie all the time, this includes intentionally as well as unintentionally. The prospect might not even know they're doing it. The reason this is a problem, though, is because it leads salespeople to believe that a prospect is more invested than they realistically are. That think it over, means they are actually going to come back and buy from you, when in reality, it only happens 27% of the time. So how do you keep this from happening in the future? Well, here are three suggestions to help you keep from falling in love at first sight. Number one, answer a question with a question. For example, when a potential client asks, how big is ABC Company? Instead of jumping right in and answering, ask for clarification. Say something like, I'm happy to answer that, but to make sure I am answering the exact question you're asking, what specifically would you like to know? One, this ensures you're answering the specific question being asked, and two, it sets you apart from your competition. Number two, respectfully push back. If a prospect asks for your rates on your first meeting, this may be a sign they're just price shopping or trying to get their current provider to lower their prices. Be weary and have the courage to push back and say something to the effect of, hey, I understand you want to know what type of financial investment you're looking at. However, at this point, I don't feel that I know enough about your business, the struggles you're facing, and how I can add value. Before we discuss price, would you mind if I ask you a few more questions? This will keep you in control of the meeting and the information you have and when you give it away. This is also another way to differentiate yourself. Your competitors aren't doing this. And number three, play hard to get. Remember the phrase, I want their business, but I don't need their business. Not every company is going to be the right fit for what you can offer and provide. As salespeople, we need to make sure that not only do we qualify to do business with our prospects, but they qualify to do business with us. This mentality alone will allow you to play the prospect dating game just a little bit more smoothly and with a competitive edge. So next time you get butterflies in your stomach during a prospect meeting and you feel you're falling too fast, remember, play hard to get, ask great, robust questions, and be willing to push back. This will help you achieve the mutually beneficial prospect relationship you've always dreamt of. Thanks for tuning in to another Sales Guy Unplugged. Happy selling.